Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. We're going to be examining Final Cut Pro and in particular, proxy workflow. What? Why proxy? Well, proxy only workflow. And you're going to do it by proxy. Yeah. I should have had like an avatar here and you could call me and I could say, we're doing it by proxy. And it would have been a proxy doing a proxy <laughs> workflow. That could have been. A proxy doing proxy. And it could have been awesome. Anyway. So um, what this is about is, I, I've had several people ask about this and it's a great question. And the, the basic question is this, hey, here's an example. I've got a Mac Pro at, at my office or at home and I have a very big project and all my media is external, okay? Because it was all on a big drive. Mm -hmm. So I have a library and I'm working in proxy. And the reason I'm working in proxy is I wanna be able to make this library kind of portable. Mm -hmm. So um, as you know, when you import media into Final Cut Pro 10 and then you make proxies, the proxies are stored inside the library. Correct. Okay, so the situation is your proxies are inside but your media is outside. So the question was, can I now take that library and throw it on my laptop, on my MacBook Pro, and go somewhere where the original media is not available anymore? Because it's, it's on a RAID connected to my Mac Pro, this big Pegasus RAID, I don't want to carry that around. Can I edit on just those proxies and make changes on my laptop and then come back and put them back on my Mac Pro and will it all update? Uh, common question, common yeah. workflow. So it's kind of a media management question. So the answer is yes, but I wanna show you something here that may save you a little time when you're doing this okay. in terms of copying files. So here I am in Final Cut Pro 10. I have a library called Proxies, uh, just so we know what we're working with here and I have a simple, I have an event with a few clips and a simple little project called Demo Proxies. And if we right click on the proxies library and say reveal in Finder, we'll see that this is on an external hard drive, okay? So pretend, and in fact in here, it's just on this little two terabyte SATA drive in this little Voyager USB 3 dock. Mm -hmm. But pretend this is our Mac Pro, for the, or pretend this is our Pegasus RAID okay. for all intents and purposes. It's an, it's an external drive. And if I right click on this library, show package contents, and open up the uh, event, demo proxies, we can see the original media is external. So that's, I just wanted to show you that with this project, the original media is not in here, but I did create proxy media. So we can see here, there are proxy media files inside the library, okay? So the library contains proxy media, it does not contain any original files, all right? So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna quit Final Cut Pro. You know, I've done my little starting edit, a little string out. It's just not much of a string out, but I've got it started. I'm going to, and just remember, it's four clips here, so we're gonna make a change. I'm gonna actually quit Final Cut, and here is the hard drive, and there is my proxies library. And what I'm gonna do is take that proxies library and drag it to, actually not my desktop, let's create a new folder. Let's create a new finder window. And in that finder window, I'll create a new folder and call it um, project, the, you know, the project that I'm working on. I'll open that up and I'm gonna copy this library over. Now this library is still fairly large, uh, but these are just proxy files. You know, if it was original media, it could be gigs and gigs and gigs and gigs, terabytes well, of even, data. Even proxy takes up a lot of space. Yeah, even, it does, but much less than the original media. So there it's copied it over. So now what I'm gonna do is eject that drive. So by ejecting that drive and um, I'll actually unplug it here so we know the drive's no longer connected, right? right. So now I'm nothing basically- Nothing up my sleeve. Nothing up my sleeve. So mm -hmm. now I am basically on the road, okay? I've got my laptop, I'm on the road, and I only have proxy media, nothing else. Mm -hmm. So I'll double click that to relaunch Final Cut. And everything's offline. Yeah, open it up and you might panic at first because everything's offline. Well, guess what? We actually weren't working in proxy. So at the top right of the viewer, I'll just switch our media to proxy and we're back in business. Just like okay, that. Uh -huh. so I'll make a little change here so something's obvious. In fact, I'll just select all these clips and I'll hit E to append them all just so we have many more clips in the timeline so yeah. it's obvious that we made a change. Many much more. Okay, and so basically I'm on the road, I'm editing now with proxies and um, I'm done. So at this point, what I'll do is uh, once again, uh, actually I won't even quit, okay? So I've got this one going. And so now I've done that, I'm back in my office, okay? So I'm gonna reconnect this drive. 
And this is connected, your big Pegasus connected to your, to your MacBook. Right. Now, you might think, oh, what I'll do, let's go back to the Finder window and take a look here. You might think what you would do is then say, hey, I'm going to copy this uh, updated library over, back. And you could do that. Right. You could just replace the old library with this new one. But what could be better than that, that's going to copy all the proxy media again. Right. So I just want to show you a way to avoid that. The way I'm going to do is rename this, this updated one so we can see it as a separate library as proxies updated. OK? And I'll make sure that one's open. And then I'll also open the one that's on my external drive, basically on my Mac Pro. So now I have them both open, proxies and proxies updated. So I'll go into the proxies updated one, and I'll take this new project, and I'll just also call it updated so I can take tell it apart. And I'll drag that updated project onto uh, my, my Mac Pro, right? And then in this case, I don't want to copy the media. Because it's, the it's already there. It's already there. It's already there. So I'll just say OK. And immediately, that new project, there it is, updated, shows up. No need to copy the proxy media back over. Double click it, and there it is with and all And it's clips. using original media, isn't it not? Well, we can just go back up here and check. And there's proxy, but I could switch to original. Right. And because that media is already available there, it Boom. just switches. It relinks. It relinks the original media. So the basic idea is, hey, I can go on the road with just my proxy media. And when I come back, I don't have to copy it all back on to the Mac Pro. There's no reason. I can just grab the project itself and throw it in the other library. That was pretty straightforward workflow. It's the whole library model now with everything being contained within libraries or being able to consolidate in or out makes all this media management stuff much easier. And pretty much any scenario you can think of, there's a, there's a way to get it done. Oh, excellent. All right, so uh, if you're out there and you're working on a huge documentary or uh, you know, a three-hour commercial, um, you now know how to you know, go edit on the beach with Proxy Media. And uh, Mark just showed you how. So make sure you check out rippletraining.com, follow us on Twitter and on Facebook, and look forward to... Uh, well, I look forward to showing you some new stuff on our next MacBreak episode. Thanks for watching.